Hi, I'm Scott Koblish. I am a DC Comics artist, and we are in the void. I don't know anything about why I'm here, but I do know about drawing. So I'm going to teach you how to draw Batgirl. Over the course of six episodes, I will be drawing five different Batman heroes and villains. And in one episode, I will show you how to draw an entire scene with the Batman and the Joker. Today's episode will be just Batgirl. I'm very excited about drawing her. She's a brilliant girl who knows exactly what she's doing as far as crime fighting. She's an incredible gymnast, she's an incredible detective, and she's a great hacker for computer things. So uh, she really brings to the table quite a bit of interesting things to the Batman-verse. And uh, I always look forward to drawing her because uh, she's got a lot of verve and a lot of uh, lightness to her character that Batman doesn't quite have. Follow along with me step by step as I sit and draw Batgirl. Uh, let's get going. So we are going to start with the action of motion and then uh, work in where we're going to put Batgirl. Batgirl is a really athletic um, hero. She She's an accomplished gymnast and uh, martial artist. So we want to keep her a little bit leath, a little bit more um, just thin, athletic. We're going to do a little bit more with the motion than we've done with the other ones. Um, basically, whereas Joker was sort of static and laughing, we're gonna have Batgirl uh, in motion. We're gonna really play up that cape, and we're gonna really play up that uh, range of motion that she has, that she really brings to this part. She's got a fascinating uh, backstory in that she is the daughter of Commissioner Gordon. She is I think in one of the iterations, she was a librarian. The reason that she was a librarian was just sort of to really indicate to everybody that she's smart as a whip and that um, nowadays she's a bit of a hacker and a computer whiz. So I think that uh, the great thing about Batgirl is that she has it all. She's an athlete as well as um, a computer genius. This motion should give us a good sense of some athleticism and a go get him kind of attitude. So this is the general blue shape that I've got here. And now we're gonna switch to a uh, pencil. Uh, I'm going to switch to a pencil that's a little, just a regular pencil. There are all sorts of different kinds of pencils that everybody uses. I use just a number two pencil. Basically with Batgirl, you want to focus on just uh, how excited she is to be Batgirl. I think that she could have done anything with her life and yet chose adventuring alongside with Batman and Robin and uh, all of their characters. So she's a little more excited about it. Her father, I'm sure, definitely does not want her to do the job that she does. I'm sure he feels, much like most parents, that the job that she would be doing is too dangerous. But she says no, she will take care of it, like most children. The great thing about her costume is that it's um, very similar to Joker's costume. There's a little bit of a shoulder pad going on. It's not pronounced like the Joker's, but um, it's definitely there. It sort of uh, creates a boxy sort of shape to her shoulders that um, I don't think she would normally have. And uh, it's partly because it's almost a jacket. It's um, It's got a zipper that goes right up the front of it and then down here. So you've got like this jacket kind of shape, but uh, it's a little tricked out because uh, right next to the jacket, she's got a belt over it. So it's not really apparent. The belt gives a distinction between the top torso and the bottom where the legs are. In this case, uh, she's got two competing things that are going on where uh, you've got the belt going across this triangle shape here. Back 
Batgirl's cape is also a lot shorter than Batman's. Uh, a little more useful in that way. It's not um, for show as much as it is for just identifying and giving her a really great swirl. It pretty much comes to a little bit below her waist. Again, we're doing all the bat capes very similarly. There's a scallop motion that goes on with it that, uh, that really identifies these uh, capes from other kinds of capes. One thing that you can kind of think through is that you could make it ovals, you know, to think through the actual figure of the cape. So you would take the ovals and then, of course, just eliminate this part that you're not going to draw. Uh, again, I urge you to, when you are drawing, to think through the figure and to think past the actual thing that you're drawing. So, for instance, even when we have this belt here, if you thought about it all the way through, it would go all the way through similar to that. However, we won't be drawing that part of it. So. One other great uh, thing uh, that I like about Batgirl's costume is that um, the legs on the side have like this really neat black shape. It tends to slim her legs down a little bit without actually like losing any of the mass to her legs uh, visually. So uh, it's kind of interesting to do. It's, um, it's fun to add it to it. Batgirl's costume is functional within her particular way of fighting crime. She's a gymnast, so it is very functional in that way that she can get around and move easily with it. I don't know if you've ever tried to do a high kick in jeans, but it's almost impossible. And uh, to have like an outfit like this, where it's a little form fitting on the bottom and a little bit more of a motorcycle jacket kind of thing on the top, it gives her a little bit of protection, but frees her up to be able to do whatever crime fighting things uh, she needs to do as she's running around. Around. One of the things that I like about uh, her cowl is that uh, it's also free to give her uh, hair a little chance to get out from underneath. Different from Batman, we can see Batgirl's ears in this outfit. I'll draw here just the bifurcating everything, bifurcating the, the uh, face, give us an indication of where the nose and eyes and mouth would be. And then again, bifurcating it from this side over here to give us an indication of where the eyes would be. It's helpful to have these things. I'm just going to erase it slightly so that I can just I can see a little ghost image of it, and then follow through on that sort of thing. There are all sorts of uh, tricks you can do for placing eyes. Sometimes in uh, full face drawing, um, you'll have a situation where uh, you'll have two eyes here and then there's a space in between. And I always used to have a teacher that would teach us that the space in between is about the same distance as one of the eyes. So um, you can adjust that as it goes. Um, this one is a three quarter view of her face. So it's not gonna have a full eye in the center here, it's gonna have something about uh, two thirds or three quarters of the size. Batgirl's eyes, we can actually see them. There's a distinction between her eyes and, uh, and how her cowl works and uh, Batman's cowl. I think the eyes uh, for her, it humanizes her, it gives her a way that we have into her emotional state. Oftentimes when you're drawing action kind of things, you'll find that the great thing that you can do is uh, actually have the eyes in the direction that you want the character to go. So she's looking off in the direction that she's moving. The cowl around the eyes are round, except when it comes down this way and it's more of a point. So it starts out like that and then actually has this um, sort of pointy, almost bat wing kind of esque kind of thing. And then um, we can shade that in a little bit to give her some depth. She has bat ears, the same as Batman. You know, when you've got a character from the three quarter view, the ears kind of go up from her natural ears. And as a result, the next ear would be over on this side. So if you think of the figure all the way through with the eyes all the way through, the ear would be probably back here if you were to think of around the figure. Anything you can do to goose along the your ability to storytell where the character's going, how fast they're going, how fast they're moving. 
That's the great thing about Superman is that uh, his cape is always flowing out after behind him. The same with Batman, same with uh, all the various superheroes that have capes. Uh, it's an advantage that uh, you really get to play around with uh, to indicate where the character's going, how fast they're moving, where they've been already in the panel um, sometimes. So She um, has a, a very big belt pocket here that uh, she puts a lot of her uh, gadgets and tricks and things like that in. And... Um, the uh, center of the belt would be here. We know that like most belt buckles have a, a little bit of a, a divot inside there that where the belt buckle goes into the hole and stuff like that. So, Also, uh, she is a member of the Batman family, so she has a bat symbol on the front. I really enjoy drawing this Batman symbol. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. You kind of go straight up like that. I come down from the clavicle sometimes and make an indication of where I want to go to meet that first point on the Batman symbol. And then I like to find the base of the symbol. Again, it's a lot of these scalloped images. It's a lot of these scalloped lines. And by scalloped, I just mean like, you know, sort of rounded um, arcs. Then I'll take, a, you know, I'll take a point here and take a point here and then like do another scalloped in between. So the cape for her ties into her shoulders uh, in a different way than it does for Batman. For her, it's tied in where she's got these two sort of uh, fasteners that she's got for the cape. So that's an interesting design that's unique to her. Her boots are like combat boots. Uh, she's got um, she's got really heavy boots. Uh, very utilitarian, very sort of uh, you know like um, work boot kind of things. It helps uh, if you are working uh, very difficult jobs to have some sort of work boot kind of thing like that. If I remember right, the boots are yellow themselves, but uh, the pants that she's got on are purple and black. So that also creates a really interesting like um, juxtaposition of colors too. I like all the different colors that the Batman family has. Everyone's kind of color coded. So you'll have Nightwing uh, in the blue and blue and black and uh, Batman in the gray and blue. The villains like Harley Quinn are um, red and black and uh, Joker is purple and, and green and uh, yellow. It's no shame in sort of taking a look at the way that the drawing is going and adjusting. So for instance, uh, the placement of that eye, I was not 100% sold on it. Not 100% sold on that version of that eye either. <laughs> but um, I think that uh, the thing to remember is that you can always correct, you can always fix things, you can always adjust. Sometimes you get a better result, sometimes you don't. I uh, have gotten used to sometimes when I'm drawing on the computer of having, a, there's this key that you can press, which is a sort of a key that gets back the last motion that you did with the, on the drawing. And that's, uh, boy, I wish I had that in real life. <laughs> Just even for day-to-day -day things.
on her boots. Uh, I have seen laces, gigantic laces. Uh, so we're going to give her some pretty impressive laces. And uh, as you see, this lace here, even though it's pretty crazy, having it go out like this doesn't really give a good sense that this leg is moved forward from this direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase what I've done here and uh, draw something where the laces look like they're being pulled from that direction. So a little bit more and maybe even a little bit more than that too. One thing that I'm going to do here before I start with the inking is um, just to lighten up this area that I created uh, in her jacket because uh, it is more of a deep purple, but it's a purple that matches the pants. And I wanted to give it a little bit of room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just lighten up that area in between. All right, I think that we've got the main part of the figure down and I think that what I'm going to do is put my pencil down and switch over to my inking tools. I bounce back and forth about whether or not to do interior design stuff first or uh, exterior things. Uh, sometimes I'll, I'll even do things based on the tool that I'm using. Uh, so for instance, uh, if I wanted to do that belt, I might start out maybe with um, one of these pens here that has a more static form. So like, you know, normally I would start out with the quill, but I think this time out, I'll start out with just this little technical pen, just to give some indication of the belt. choose to use my Croquil. Basically, it is an um, ink dip pen that I use that uh, very, very old technology. Some people ask me where it is that I decide to start. And honestly, like, um, I don't know that I've ever really sat down and thought about it. Sometimes I'll, um, sometimes I'll start with a thing that I think that is the best part of the drawing. Uh, sometimes I'll start with some part that I think is the worst part of the drawing because I'm trying to fix it. I think it all sort of just depends on what you want to do. And I think the most important part is to actually just start. The first DC Comics work that I ever did was um, back in the 1990s. I was an inker, which is a specialized skill. It's the skill that I'm actually performing now. And um, I was uh, lucky enough that I had a friend that um, worked as an editor over there at DC Comics. And um, he's a great guy. He was in charge of the Superman office. And um, the first few projects that I worked on over at DC were... Um, inking some Superman things. And then um, as I've uh, moved into more penciling, I found that uh, I've had a couple really interesting projects over at DC. One of the ones I really enjoyed was, uh, I did a couple Batman stories uh, where Batman, uh, one of them he's fighting Clayface, which is a really neat villain. And the other, I think we had created a villain for him to fight. Uh, I did a Lobo story that was really interesting over at DC. I thought that was very fascinating. It was a Lobo Hanukkah story, which I really enjoyed. I thought the writing on it was just fantastic. You know, it's really neat to be able to do things over at DC. When I was a kid, like I said, I used to just draw Batman all the time. You know, other characters like Firestorm or the Teen Titans or things like that. And I just really enjoyed the, the DC characters. DC has a tremendous amount of great, great characters. You know, and uh, they always just scratch the surface with all the, the movies and the TV. And uh, boy, they just have an endless amount of great characters. And Batgirl is one of these characters that I just really enjoy watching.
You'll notice that I'm moving the paper around quite a bit, and um, part of that is because of um, the way that the particular pen that I'm using um, functions best. It's um, I'm pulling um, my line, so when you push it, it it's a little harder to like get that to work. So, for instance, I did push it on that one, but it doesn't work out as well. So, like you know, I'll scoop it around this way, and in order to complete the the, um, the line, I'll have to turn the page around, start the line from over here, and go back down like that. So that is something that um, you know. Don't be afraid to move the paper around to accommodate the the way that your pen or brush or whatever needs to go. In uh, comic books, oftentimes they will differentiate between the tasks that everybody has in the interest of time. It takes so long sometimes to uh, pencil out and ink a book that sometimes it's more advantageous for them to get somebody to take some of those tasks and uh, spread them out. So for instance, um, the first part of this drawing where I penciled uh, Bad Girl out, there would be times where my editor would say, okay, now I need you to draw the next one. And I would say, well, I'm not quite done with this. I have to finish inking Bad Girl. And he would say, well, you know what? I just need you to do the next drawing. And what they would do is send this drawing over to an inker. And then uh, that inker would uh, take care of it from there. Having done all of that work with the quill, I'm gonna switch over to a uh, small uh, technical pen for some of the smaller uh, details. And then after that, I think we will do some brush work and then be done with this particular drawing. What I've noticed in drawings is that most people look uh, first at the eyes of a character, then they will look at the face of the character, then they will look at the body, and then they will look at uh, where the character is in relation to its environment. So there's almost a hierarchy of how people look at things. It's a hierarchy that actually holds up um, visually throughout all media and throughout your personal interactions. Most people do look at someone's eyes first and then um, at the rest of their face, certainly, to sort of gauge like what that person is thinking, how they're thinking about it, and uh, what their motivations may be. After you look at the face, oftentimes people will look at the body in order to try and figure out like the rest of the story. All right. I am going to switch over to a brush now. The great advantage of having a brush is that you can get large areas with the ink. I find that they're really fascinating tools and um, useful in getting large areas to be completely done. Some people will just draw with a brush the entire time. Brushes always have an, a point to them, and uh, some people are really great at um, drawing only with a brush. You can cover a lot of uh, distance with a brush.
Well, there we are. That's Batgirl. And uh, now that we've finished this image in the black and white stage, we're gonna send this off to a colorist. The colorist is gonna come in and add uh, depth and form uh, through color into this figure. I really enjoyed drawing with you today, and I hope that you did too. You can join us uh, for some of our next episodes on how to draw the DC multiverse. In addition, you can check out my book, How to Draw DC, for more of an in-depth process on how to draw Batman, superheroes, and supervillains. Until next time, I'm Scott Koblish, and I look forward to drawing with you again soon. Well, at least the lights are still on this time. But, oh, I spoke too soon.